so one of the key emission systems that we have on cars and have used for many years, as we talked about in the presentation, is positive crankcase ventilation. Uh, the importance there is to clear the crankcase of contaminants, mainly moisture um, and also fuel, if it makes its way into the oil. We want to get those out. Those contaminants affect the oil's performance over time. Um, it can cause other bigger engine issues. And so PCV systems work great um, as long as they've got the ability to flow air and flow air at the proper time. And so as we go through testing them, that's really the thing we're looking for. Um, can the valve produce a flow? And is that flow regulated? And can fresh air make its way um, into the circuit as well? So we're gonna use this, our 2005 Stratus and look through the PCV system for this car, talk about the manufacturer test procedure and use a vacuum gauge and some things to see um, how that functions and see that it works the way that it should. Here's the engine bay of our 2005 Stratus. Um, it's a great one to look at because everything is really prominent, easy to access. Um, so anytime I go looking for PCV system components, I know that I'm gonna have a couple things tied to the intake manifold, and I'm gonna have something tied to the valve cover, and I'm gonna have something tied to something just post air filter. And so on this one, I can see this great big hose right here. This is my fresh air inlet. I can track that all the way to here. There's an additional baffle that's part of my valve cover. Right next to that, I find this guy. This is my PCV valve. It happens to be threaded into the valve cover on this particular car. And then I've got some vacuum hose and line that makes its way down and right here connects to the intake manifold. And so if you remember our flow and process for this system, I've got fresh air that gets filtered by the air filter, goes through this tube into the crankcase. It's pulled there into the crankcase by the PCV valve, which is modulating the engine vacuum, right? So I create a vacuum with my pistons going down, pulling a vacuum on this hose, and at given times, my PCV valve will allow the crankcase to pull fresh air through and take it to the intake manifold to be burned, right? So if I've had unburnt fuel or just moisture, I'm using that flow in order to remove that from the crankcase. So with the car running, there's a couple things that I ought to check anytime I look at a PCV system. So even if I don't have uh, manufacturer test procedures, um, there's some things that I should look for. One, at my valve and my intake routing, make sure that all these hoses are intact and in good shape. So things like this rubber boot that see a lot of heat from the engine, they see oil and petroleum products over time, that rubber is likely to get brittle and crack. Um, in fact, if we can see it, this hose down here, you can see has been replaced. We put a piece of bulk hose on here because that very hose split at the adapter connection to the intake manifold, creating a vacuum leak. Anytime I have any leakage in any of these hoses, the system's not gonna be able to function well. Um, and worse yet, if I get something on like this one here, that's gonna create a vacuum leak and that's gonna show up with other drivability problems. So on our particular car, the Stratus, Good connection here. I don't see any leaks. I don't hear anything, right? If I was really unsure, I could take a smoke machine, plumb smoke into the crankcase, and then see what happened from that point. Um, fresh air hose also looks to be in good shape, right? And so at that point, we could move on from just our visual inspection. So the next thing I'm going to look at is taking this hose off, and you can hear the engine surge upward. I've got vacuum coming through this hose just fine. Right, so having an adequate vacuum source is important. I could verify that vacuum source by getting my vacuum gauge, right? Then I can verify that I've got pretty normal, I don't have a great connection here, but pretty standard engine vacuum um, at about 19 inches of mercury. So from this point forward um, is somewhere where manufacturer testing will differ. Um, one of the great tests that's pretty universal is if I have easy access to this fresh air inlet, I could take that off and plug it and over a little bit of time, see if it develops suction or vacuum. Uh, if I use my gauge here to better show all of you, 
it will take it a little bit of time once I get a good connection. But basically, as I've capped off, I've essentially blocked the fresh air into the crankcase, vacuum from the manifold through the PCV valve is going to begin to draw the crankcase into a vacuum. And so you can see that creeping down. If I was to rev the engine a little bit or put a little bit more load, um, I could influence this. So it's best done at idle, uh, just with a little bit of patience. And so you can see there, moving into vacuum, that tells me two things. One, my crankcase is fairly sealed, right? Because I'm able to develop this vacuum. That's a good sign. The other thing is that my PCV valve has the ability to open, right? We know that there's a, a limited flow occurring right now. Um, because the engine is at idle, right? Right. So just a little bit of patience, read it. My connection's not that great, so it's wavering there. But based on that test, we've got a pretty good flow within our PCV system. So next, what we're going to do is remove the PCV valve. This is another common way that I can inspect the valve for operation. Um, this one comes out, it's threaded. I'd already broke it loose. One of the things you want to pay attention to if you have a threaded PCV valve is that these threads came with a sealant tape on them originally. And so if I take this out and I put it back in, I need to replace that. Um, you can tell on this one, it's been in and out several times. You can see remnants, especially in the bore on the valve cover and on the end of the valve, but not much left on the threads. Um, so that's something that we would want to restore whenever we put this back in. If you've got one that just pops out, say it has like a grommet, um, a rubber grommet that seals it to the valve cover, I want to pay attention to that seal, right? Make sure that it is still soft or at least somewhat pliable um, and that it's establishing a seal around the valve. So this particular one, when I get it out, one of the tests that a lot of people do um, is called a shake test. So I just you know, move it like this. It's a pretty crude test, but it does tell me if the valve in the center is free and able to move. Um, this particular one, I'll take some close-up pictures, but you can see some of the pieces inside. Um, another test that I can use to see whether or not this can seal or flow is to use a hose and something in my, my mouth to apply a suction to this side, pressure to this side, and see, does it go through, does it stop, right? Um, and so those are two of the things that I could do to decide, is this valve okay? Uh, most of these valves are typically quite cheap. And so in certain scenarios, if I suspect that this valve has an issue, um, it's got maybe debris or just uh, grime, gunk, kind of oilish buildup inside, sludge kind of buildup. Um, it's a fairly inexpensive part to replace as part of um, a service for the emission system. But beyond that, it is not something that has a dedicated service interval. So here we're going to talk about some of the different components that exist on a turbocharge application. Um, so specifically, this applies to a BMW product. Um, just to illustrate some of the different ways that manufacturers accomplish routing of positive crankcase ventilation gases, as well as how they try to limit um, pressure from being influenced um, and being an issue on turbocharged applications. So this particular valve cover is from a late 2000s BMW 3 Series um, with a twin turbocharged 3 liter engine, the N54 uh, engine code. So this one, this whole assembly here on top of the valve cover is my PCV. Um, so a couple pieces here. What we're missing that we don't see is that this port right here would be connected to one of the fresh air inlets on the back side of the engine that goes to the rear bank turbocharger. And so the unique thing about this one, if we start here, um, this is effectively my fresh air inlet. Um, and it has got a valve, you can kind of hear it moving, um, with a metered orifice inside to help with uh, crankcase pressure so that we want to limit crankcase pressure and blow by and then so the valve and flap that's in here helps with that process. That then connects to this system. You can kind of see the metered orifices and outputs here. They all go to a main baffle uh, and then within that they are then ran through this which is my PCV valve. So this one you can kind of hear it shake test isn't too great on this one because there's a lot of plastic material. 
um, but you can see the valve that's inside there. And so it's mounted within this baffle system. And then that system, after it goes through the PCB valve, is then guided to these individual ports all across here. And so if we flip this up, these small openings, you can see this whole piece that comes across here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six ports. So these connect to drilled passageways on the cylinder head that go from basically the top seal surface of the valve cover down into individual intake runners. And I'll throw up a picture um, of that to try. So these runners help disperse all the PCV flow to individual cylinders and hopefully do that in a very uniform style. A lot of manufacturers have employed systems like this. Um, they're good because it's all packaged here. I've gotten away from a lot of the rubber boots and hoses like we saw on our Stratus. Uh, the downside is that from a technician's point of view, it's much harder for me to assess what's happening inside this. If this becomes built up with carbon, it's a lot harder for me to audit that. I'm now taking quite a bit of stuff apart. Um, the other side, if I deem the valve covers okay, now I also have to worry about this port that goes through the aluminum cylinder head. And on a direct injected vehicle like this, carbon buildup issues are, are very prevalent. And so the idea that that port within the aluminum cylinder head could become clogged is probably fairly high. And so it becomes something that I've got to pay attention to.